Okay, hello and welcome guys. Today I would like to explain how we can identify and detect that sort of threat which is called advanced persistent threat. Now guys, advanced persistent threat is the most sophisticated and dangerous types of threats that you would ever encounter in your network. Basically, an advanced persistent threat may be delivered to a network uh, via uh, a local exploit, via an insider threat, social engineering, uh, or uh, drive-by download. So basically, advanced persistent threat has many aspects to be delivered in our network. And it's not just that type of threat that uh, be enough to, to infect one host or one computer tries to infect as as many hosts as it can hack in our network so today I have simplified this tutorial to to simulate how we can detect those type of threats so basically guys we have here a Wireshark and we have a snort IDS open in our security onion device so basically uh, here we got a pickup file okay from uh, let's say um, our IT administrator has sent us a file which contains a suspicious PCAP file uh, we have to analyze and see what we can detect basically guys I've applied those filters because we got uh, 10 10 6 11 is client IP in our network say some Windows PC and we got 10, 10, 4, 20 is a server on our network. Basically, you can you can say like DMD server. And I applied this filter to try to capture and see all the communications that was taking place between those two IP addresses. Basically, what has raised our suspicion to uh, analyze this file is we have detected that the IP address 10, 10, 4, 20, as you can see in here, let's say um, in this packet capture, we can see that the source address is 10, 10, 4, 20 is trying to communicate to the destination IP address 10, 10, 6, 11 and trying to visit a web page called 1.asp. So basically, we got 10, 10, 4, 20 is the server. Uh, in the DMZ, okay, is trying to get file from 10, 10, 6, 11. So that tells us that the client IP is 10, 10, 6, 11, which is a normal Windows PC, is answering requests, okay, that shouldn't be answering. Why? Because when you are, when, when, when we say that we have 10, 10, 6, 11 as an internal IP address Windows PC, Windows PC, a normal Windows PC, doesn't have to host um, web server or uh, doesn't have to answer requests for web pages, basically because it's a client. And the one that has to do that mission is the IP, which is 10, 10, 4, 20, which is a DMZ server. Now, what happens in here is the opposite, actually the opposite, because we got 10, 10, 4, 20, which is the server IP address or the DMZ server is trying to get a web page from the client Windows PC 10, 10, 6, 11. So basically, this raised suspicion because that tells us first that the firewall on the Windows PC is shut down because basically, and normally, any Windows firewall, any Windows PC, in any Windows machine doesn't allow inbound connections from untrusted ports or doesn't allow import inbound connections. At if the uh, Windows PC is not configured to allow so. So basically the client PC here, 10, 10, 6, 11, is acting like a web server, okay? And that raises our suspicion to further investigate the case. We can see that the client, 10, 10, 6, 11, is answering the request with HTTP 200 OK. Basically, it's returned the web page that has been requested by 10.10.4.20, which is a DMZ server. 
So basically, we can conclude the, the firewall on the Windows PC, which has the IP address 10.10.6.11, is turned off. And unless, unless uh, an administrator has turned off the firewall, it shouldn't be turned off. So basically, we got suspicion number one that the firewall on Windows PC is turned off. We can see that there are more than one communication or one, one more than one web request from the DMZ server to Windows PC clients. As you can see in here, more than one page is requested. So if we go to um, the Snort IDS in here, um, basically a little bit slow. Okay. Um, here, uh, as we can see, is looking through the alerts in Snort, we can see the um, possible Chrome update, DNS updates, integrity, Okay, now we got the IP address which is 10.10.6.11, which is the IP address that relates back to our Windows PC client, is, re is communicating with an external IP address 209.165.200.235 over the port 8080. By inspecting the rule that triggered the incident, we can see that Breaking this down a little bit. Okay. Now this rule is telling us that. Okay, this rule. This rule is telling us that an internal client PC has initiated a communication over ports, over HTTP ports, okay, to suspicious dotted quad with fake browser. Now, what does it mean when we when we say that dotted quad? Dotted quad is when you try to um, or when you browse to a, to a website instead of using the domain name, you are using the IP address. So we can see that the IDS triggered suspicious alerts, telling us that a client PC or Windows PC is trying to communicate over port eighty eighty. If we go down a little bit, okay, looking further to the packet by ticking the mark on show packet role, show packet data we can see down, um, You can see more information about the packet capture that has been in communication between our internal client PC, which is Windows PC, and the external communication. Now, in conclusion, we can conclude that the client PC is relaying communication between the server IP address, which is the DMD server, back to the external IP address. And previously we have known that the alert is showing us that the client PC 10.10.6.11 Okay, let's expand this a little bit in here. Okay, the client PC which is 10.10.6.11 has previously communicated with 209 which is external IP address to download Java file. And the IDS is telling us that the, the client Windows PC is infected with Java file, suspicious Java file. In the previous video, we have analyzed that this Java file is, uh, is identified as malware by most antivirus services. So basically, by correlating those events, we can see that the client PC or the Windows PC is infected with 
a Java file or malicious Java file then is used by the advanced persistent threat to act like a proxy server to carry out communication between other clients or PCs on our network. So it has pivoted to the server address, which is 10.10.4.20, okay, to exfiltrate information, data, and other uh, classified information from this computer. Basically, this what what's happening now is um, the, the the DMZ server is trying to uh, relay communication to the client PC, which is acting as a proxy server to carry out and communicate those information to this server. So basically, we can conclude that it's not just we it's not just about one host or one computer just that has been hacked. We got the, the entirely the overall network being hacked in here, as you can see. Um, Java Java client and the Java client in here or the Java file which has been downloaded by our PC client was the initial exploitation attack vector that has led to the exploitation of what you guess what the DMZ server so basically guys this tells us that our network has been has been undergoing an advanced persistent threat attack and you have to analyze all those events to see and detect uh, and any exploitation or any uh, indication of compromise. Basically, because if we click in here under this, uh, okay, maybe there's a problem in here. Um, let me close Wireshark. Okay. Which is a problem in here. Okay. I think there is a problem with this interface. It's just suck. Okay. So basically, guys, that's it. That's how you detect an APT in your network. I have simplified and streamlined the, the process as much as I can so basically when you see more than one infected client in your network and, and when you see a client or a normal Windows PC is acting like a web server or is acting like a proxy for communication with other external IP addresses you can tell or conclude that you have more than one infected host on your network and basically it's pivoting through other PCs in your network and you better carry out your investigation and analyze um, similar events that uh, we have analyzed today and hope you find this tutorial useful and if you have any if you have any question please send me a message or a comment